Hey, what's up guys? Long time no see, about a week. I'm not dead, just got caught up in some uh, work. Anyways, today in the news, we talk about the RTX 4090, AMD motherboards, and more. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. It's been a crazy couple of days for the RTX 4090. Popular YouTubers can now unbox the 4090 they receive as a review sample, but they can't review it. I hate when they do that. Why do they have an unboxing embargo? Anyways, it's a chonker for sure. Nvidia themselves did reveal some performance number for Overwatch 2, and as you can see, it is pretty good. Now, is it $1,600 worth? I don't know, 500 FPS for a game that looks like a 2016 release, not super impressive. You can see here that the uh, RTX 3060 still does very well at uh, 122 FPS. I hope you can tell that I don't like the 4090's price. At least this is a raw performance. It's not using DLSS 3's frame generation. Also in 4090 news, there's some weird thing happening with AMD motherboards. Now this was found by, well, me. <laughs> I was looking around and shopping for X670 boards, and then I was wondering what kind of AGISA these specific motherboards were running. Now, I went to ASUS's website, and I checked the X670E Heroes page, and look at this, this is peculiar. If you go to the driver and utility section, then you go to the BIOS and firmware version, then you click on show all right here, and show more description, show more description. Here you can see improved GPU compatibility for GeForce RTX 40 series. Now, ASUS doesn't disclose a whole lot about this specific issue, uh, so I decided to check other manufacturer vendors. So I went to the MSI website, checked out the uh, Meg X670E Ace, and uh, in the BIOS section, there was nothing, no extra information, basically just a new BIOS, until I went to Gigabyte's website. Now, if we take a look, I'm here on the support page for the X670E Aorus Master Revision 1.0, and if you scroll all the way down to get to the BIOS section right here, you can see on the uh, description of version F7E and F7D that it fixes NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 4090 PCIe downspeed issues. And there's two different system management units, 84.73 and 84.79. Now, I'm not 100% sure of what this is. I checked every motherboard vendor's website, and this is pretty much the closest that I got, so I can only speculate on what the issue could be. This is specific to AMD motherboards. Thankfully, there's a fix now, but it means that if you buy into an AMD system for the CPU and motherboard and you go for an RTX 4090, you have to update your BIOS, at least on the specific model. As for the issue specifically, it says PCIe downspeed issue. That means it's probably running at something else than PCIe Gen 5, 4, or 3. I'm speculating 1.1 or 2.0, which causes the uh, 4090 to have terrible performance and why they need to fix it. I guess we'll have to wait for someone to sort of flag that issue, but as it is, it's interesting to see. Speaking of AMD motherboards, the B650s are starting to make the rounds. Unfortunately, the prices are not as low as I thought they would be. AMD said that B650, or at least their entire lineup of chipsets, should start at $125 USD. Now, as is, MSI is the first manufacturer to have their pricing leaked. Essentially, you have one leak where BNH Photo Video just released all of the prices for their uh, Meg, Pro, and MPG series of motherboards. Boards, and in that leak specifically, it starts at 199 USD. And you have another leak from a uh, different source where the uh, MSI Pro B650 MA Wi Fi starts at 189 US dollars, making all of the MSI lineup more expensive than a Z690 board from Intel. So the price of entry with a 7600X is actually quite high now. You're paying two thirds the amount of your CPU at a minimum to get into the AM5 platform. With AM4 from B350 all the way to X570, the cost ratio between a motherboard and a CPU was always more favorable than, well, with AM5. At least if we base ourselves on MSI's pricing, it looks like Intel is going to be the budget king on the next generation. 
Speaking of Intel, the A770 reviews are out, and I've gotta admit, I'm kinda surprised. It doesn't look like it's that bad, but at the same time, it does have its drawback. In fact, Hardware Canucks got shipped two by mistake. There was supposed to be a one A770 and one A750, but they got two A770s, so they lent me one. They sent me this one over so I could do some content about it. Look forward to some Intel Arc content on this channel. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. It's been a week, but I won't leave you for that long. We'll be back on Friday for the next episode. Take care, you guys. Stay frosty, and I'll see you on the next one.